joined by John Stewart himself. But who else would it be? <laughs> Fareed, it's nice to see you. Um, I love your aquarium. Thank you. Happy. Thank you, exactly. Yes. Um, we, we can go swimming afterwards. Yes. Um, so I've got to ask you, it's a big thing in the news, Donald Trump indictment. There are people... What? Who, no, no, just uh, stay with me for a minute. There are people I've been watching say, the live cameras <laughs> at the courthouse. It's imminent. <laughs> Breathless speculation. So there are people who say, yes, you have to indict him because he, he has, in fact, broken the laws. And there are other people who say, this is going to turn him into a martyr. This is his right. path to redemption. Sure. How, how do you think about it? Oh, I, I, the law should always take into account someone's popularity. I think that's, that's oh, I mean, what, what's happened to our country? For, it's as though you can't even commit financial fraud anymore. You can't, you can't inflate the value of your properties uh, when you need a loan and then deflate it uh, with taxes. I mean, uh, the next thing you know, they're going to send you to jail instead of your lawyer and your accountant and your campaign manager and everyone else. Uh, around you. It's no to the idea that someone may face account. I love that Fareed Zakaria doesn't give a shit. He's just like not giving him anything. I mean, John Stewart is right. Okay. He's right. This is a very libbed up conversation to be having. So like, of course, when it's a, he is the best lib. Okay. He is the best lib. So he's doing a good job. Uh, being the best boy of the libs, okay? This is the best you're going to get from, from liberals in general. He's the king of the libs. And this ultimately is a very liberal conversation to be having because if you look at it from the perspective outside of, like, uh, you know, liberalism, it's like nobody fucking gives a shit. The wealthy get away with doing tremendous amounts of crimes. Donald Trump got away with doing tremendous amounts of crimes because the system is designed in a way to shelter the wealthy just like the system is also designed in a way to offer all of the gains in the stock market uh, to the wealthy where the gains are privatized and the losses are socialized. At the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And obviously, when that ad break comes, the gains are still only socialized when the magnanimous decide to gift subs to the working poor, okay? But of course, if you are not lucky enough to get that gifted sub, you can subscribe on your own for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime, by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. Prop 65 warning. Thank you for the 10 gifted subs, allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Parady, thank you for the five gifted subs as well. Uh, don't want to hear from you uh, saying that this is a mid-ad segue. Suck my dick. Amanda, thank you for the five gifted subs as well. Hassan, are you going to cover the school shooting in Nashville? The FBI are on my street right now. Apparently, the school shooter was my neighbor. Uh, I already covered it, uh, and we've moved on from it. Do you want to know why? Sakura Gore, thank you for the 25. Get the subs. Holy shit. Uh, you want to know why we covered it and moved on from it, even though it's only been like two fucking hours since we started? Because at this point, unfortunately, school shootings are so commonplace. Mass shootings are so commonplace that I can... I have a streamlined approach to covering it, immediately giving you what the fucking talking points are, uh, and and waiting for uh, you know new details or whatever, and then uh, and then moving on. We don't have any more information about what's going on. <clears throat> when when we get more information, I can I can talk about it. But it's just like it's just like odd. Uh, like there's nothing to to talk about other than you know give you some of the details and then address some of the misinformation that's going on. Yeah. So nowadays, oh, this clip is better. Okay, well, let's watch this first, and then we'll. Uh, who's that rich and powerful is outrageous, and this country should. La Razington, thank you for the tank of <laughs> the but, subs. But what if it? What if it turns out to be his his get out of jail free pass? It's his path to people will see him as a martyr. He gets he. Okay, I, you're okay I with I, that. He, is that? I, he could I become don't, president again. He could become president anyway. Fareed, you, it's, we either have the rule of law or we have no rule of law. The rule of law does not take into account. Dude, Fareed is fucking crazy for being like, oh, this, this law, like this court case might actually trump uh, Trump's popularity. CNN has done this every single time. I've been yelling at CNN. I have been yelling at CNN. I feel like we are literally repeating the same cycle. Okay, CNN has been doing this 
since Donald Trump like uh, came down that goddamn escalator, okay? They literally are like, well, this is going to increase Trump's popularity. It's like, first of all, you're going to increase Trump's popularity, okay? Like, shut the fuck up. You're doing that. You're, you're doing that. You're doing that every day, okay? Um, it's mind-boggling that they're still being like, well, should we even prosecute him? Because, like, what if he becomes more popular? First of all, do I think it might make him more popular? Yeah, of course. It's super sick to, like, beat the case, okay? You go in. It's like a bullshit fucking, uh, it's a, it's a bullshit violation. It's literally the weakest one they could catch him on. Okay. It's like almost hilarious that they would get him on this, uh, little like minor thing that like other presidents have actually gotten away with by paying a fine. Okay. That part is true. That part is definitely true. But what John Stewart is saying is still also true, which is that, what are you, what are we doing here? Like we should hold presidents to account. Like, what the fuck is this kind of, what, what, what is this mentality that we're like, oh, well, he might become more popular in prison, so we just can't do anything about it. It's so stupid. If that might make you a martyr to somebody, I'd much rather have the conversation be, what is the law? What exactly are we saying that, that he did? His lawyer went to jail for this same situation for a couple of years. So what is the crime? Is it a crime? The there reason are people who say it's selective prosecution, that this would not... Everything is get. selective prosecution. The reason why Donald Trump became popular in the first place and the reason why these populist movements is that the citizenry have become fed up with the lack of accountability for those in power. We have no accountability in our financial systems. We have no accountability for the bankers. I mean, our uh, Congress trade stocks with information they get making true laws, and they do it hit him on that great success speak on it and they won't stop it because they're the ones in charge of making the law about it i love that and instead of i love that bringing accountability to the rampant corruption that is uh, uh surrounds our our government and our financial systems the supreme court just changed the definition of corruption rather than prosecuting it, rather than holding people accountable, they just went, how about this? How about, okay, why don't we just say this? It's even better than that, was that they said, you politicians, you think that's corruption because you're engaging in it, but we actually don't think it's corrupt. And, and we're we're going to tell you, don't worry about it. You can influence yeah, Pedal yeah. as long as you don't explicitly say, this is by the way, thing. this money is so that I may influence this law yeah. specifically and you have to lay out. Like, that is what has, the, the lack of confidence that people have in the system is, and you even see it throughout the media, even that conversation. Fareed isn't wrong about the prison thing though. Jailing a candidate isn't effective. Everyone loves and remembers our 31st president, Eugene Debs. I mean, Eugene Debs ran from prison and uh, I, what, what did he get? Like more than a million votes, which was pretty crazy. Uh, but, that's not, like, I think throwing Donald Trump in prison, it's very different. I mean, it's very, very different than, than the situation at hand with Eugene Debs. Like, you're talking, about, you're, you're talking about comparing a former president who is, like, infinitely more popular in a right-wing reactionary uh, country to, uh, to a socialist. You know what I mean? Like that's, there is no, there is, like you can't even make an analogy in that situation. Um, I do think that, I do think that uh, Donald Trump going to, going, he's not even going to go to jail, I don't think. Okay, he can beat this case, especially because like, there is truth to what Republicans have said about Hillary Clinton and the Barack Obama campaigns also paying a fine because usually campaign finance violations or mismanagement uh, is, is due to uh, improper, uh, like due to, uh, due to improper accounting or just not classifying specifically what you're paying someone for. Um, and, and, and in Trump's case, like what ended up happening to happen is a consequence of like not properly filing exactly what they were paying for 
And uh, for this reason, I don't think that he would go to jail for this anyway. Uh, especially when there is so much, uh, especially when there's so much uh, uh, precedent for other candidates also just like paying a fine for much larger numbers even. Um, so I don't know. Um, compliances are a huge thing, but rarely you go to jail. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's like a misdemeanor charge that's like trumped up uh, to a felony, but ultimately it doesn't really matter. Um, because like, it's, it's funny. It's laughable. It's fun. I want him to go to jail. It would be super sick. It would be even funnier if like someone tried to break him out of prison. Like I, I'm in it for the content. Does that make sense? Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is going to like truly stop Donald Trump. If anything, it might make him more popular, might make him more relevant. Um, he needs to do a couple different things though. He does need to like start baiting on Twitter again. You know what I mean? He's not doing enough of that. Like, on Truth Social, nobody gives a shit. Like, there, he, he is not as rizzed up as he used to be. He doesn't have it like that. I thought he's still banned on Twitter. No, he's not. He just doesn't post because he's posting on Truth Social. But, like... I think that is actually harming him a little bit because he needs to be antagonizing media more. He needs to be antagonizing the media more so that the media covers him. But as it stands currently, um, the media doesn't really cover him all that much because he's not top of mind all that much. So, um, you know, when the media doesn't cover him and he doesn't have a direct way to talk to uh, his audience or a broader audience, he's going to fall off a little bit. Does that make sense? Conversation. Should we, should we not? It's a, oh, but he's popular and then it might make him more popular, but not less popular. D did he do something wrong? What was it? Explain that to us. What is the law that he supposedly violated? What are the ramifications of it? Uh, I, I don't see him ever actually going to jail. I personally don't even care. I just want a system that somehow finds a consistent accountability. So in many ways, you, at least for me, you created or defined American political satire. How has that changed? I mean, it feels to me like the, the, the stuff you did, mm -hmm. you know, the, the showing the video and then commenting, it's become, it, it's everybody does it. And it's sure. not even, the, it's not even. All right, Fareed, like fucking calm down. Okay. I mean, Jon Stewart did pave the way in many respects for political satire. I am not, uh, I'm not going to shy away from that. I have talked about it as well. Like in my own personal development, Jon Stewart played a role. Okay. But, like, fucking calm down a little bit, okay? Don't glaze him too hard. Even comics. I yes. mean, that's what Tucker Carlson does when he wants to make his points. Sure. He's, he's borrowing from your yes. playbook. Yes. No, it's, it's a real delight knowing you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always good to arm the most cynical. And Hassan gets so jealous when his chat admires someone who isn't him. What do you mean? I, it, guys, I admire Jon Stewart. Chatter? What the fuck are you talking about? I just said... I just said... Jon Stewart was formative in my development, okay? Like, I, what, do you, what? Worst people in media. But do you look at it and say, now this whole thing is commoditized? You, you, or well, it was, listen. I, oh, my God, Hassan, stop being such a soy boy. Ay, ay, ay. All the fucking uh, idiots are in the chat today. I mean, we were selling Budweiser. <laughs> uh, it's always been commoditized. It was, I think it's, you know, there's a lot of talk of, so exposing absurdity or exposing hypocrisy, what's the point? Well, the point is, is that this is a relentless fight. They always talk about, you know, the, uh, the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. But it doesn't bend towards justice by gravity. Like, you have to bend it. And there's a bunch of people trying to bend it back. And you use every tool in your arsenal, and none of them will be... Uh, 
you know, the one thing. There is no panacea. It takes, you know, all those different things doing in Washington over these past few years gave me a great understanding of how things actually get done incrementally and, and sometimes in one fell swoop. But our country is held together by hundreds of really talented legislative aides. Their bosses, many times, are wind-up dolls who really don't know. I mean, half of it, if you go down there, especially the Senate is like an assisted living facility. <laughs> like, the intramural sports at the Senate. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's held together by these legislative aides that are relentlessly trying uh, uh, to do the right thing and by the thousands of grassroots activists that are trying to get access. And they're blocked by a moat of lobbyists and moneyed interest that prevent the people in that building from doing the work that best benefits all the people outside of that building. And, and, and that's the process. So but you have to use every tool you have to permeate that force field. But presumably the people there who are Republicans, who are conservative Republicans, mm -hmm. those aides think they're doing the right thing and they're trying to get across their... Sure. Right, but they're their doing vision. it, they're honest. Okay, this part of the interview sucks, but from what I understand, this part of the interview is actually very good, uh, where he spits a little bit. GOP resorts to culture wars because they're out of ideas. It's going to be a fucking classic Hassanabi-style rant, I suspect. When you watch Republicans campaign against Democrats, they don't campaign much on what they used to, which was, you know, the Democrats were big spenders or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. What, it's all about critical race theory. Sure. And it's all this cal cancel culture stuff. Yes. The biggest problem. Why does it work and what should, the, what should Democrats do? do you, are they falling for a bait in doing this? In How would I respond to this? Probably in the exact same way that John Stewart is about to respond to this, which is that Culture wars are the only thing, wedge issues are the only things that the Republicans have because they recognize now that the actual, the actual advocacy for deregulation and the actual advocacy for, uh, you know, underfunding our social safety nets is genuinely unpopular. The reason why it's uh, uh, genuinely unpopular is because it actually harms people. So they have to hit the culture war agenda over and over and over again to deflect away from the real problems. Okay, why are you saying baited, hostic debate? What, what are you guys saying? Now, there was a delicate balance in the way that they used to hit the culture war button, and now they've actually gone a little too far, and that's why you're seeing, uh, that's why you're seeing uh, a genuine electoral consequence for the Republican Party, because they are, like I said, a victim of their own success. Oh, because he said baiting. God, my chat is so... It doesn't matter what we're fucking talking about. Uh, it's just... We are so pepega on this fucking platform. Huh. Anyway. Um, but that's it. That's the point. They have... If they, if they openly talk about what their agenda is, which is like stopping poor people from getting access to a decent quality of life, or stopping corporations from... Uh, from having a profound amount of influence and control over things that would be otherwise like necessary for survival. Uh, you know, gatekeeping healthcare, things of that nature, which is what the Republicans and even the Democratic Party in unison collectively advocate for, uh, whether openly or secretly, it doesn't matter. Uh, the outcome is still the same, right? Uh, they can't talk about that shit, so they have to talk about like new villains every day, uh, you know, LGBT uh liberals or a manifestation of liberalism in the form of like uh black people getting any kind of uh civil liberties or any kind of equality um all of those things or woke culture crt it's basically the same repackaged fascist propaganda that's been around that gets recycled and reused in perpetuity uh and they're doing that because uh, there is it's a very very good mechanism of control it's very good uh, in, and very successful in uh, dividing the population and making it seem like there are genuine formative differences between the two bourgeois parties, which uh, are operating at the behest of corporations and the mega wealthy. There is no genuine divide when it comes to, there is no genuine divide 
when it comes to military spending. There is no genuine divide between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. There's no serious, meaningful difference in opinion when it comes down to endless military spending, endless warfare, or doing something about corporate, uh, corporate influence. Okay? But because of the way that uh, Republicans con constantly hit the reactionary culture war button, you can make up uh you can make up differences like well the democratic party don't want to melt uh gay people versus the republican party that wants to you know what i mean talking about these issues uh i mean i i don't know if they're falling for a bait but i mean i think again i i, I don't even think half of the republicans that do it even mean it i think it's they think it's it they think it's worse right. what would you do if you were out of governing ideas if you, if you didn't know how to govern a country of this magnitude and a country of this diversity, and uh, you basically are running on government is broken, and then when you get in office, you have to be terrible to prove the original premise, like, it must be great to be able to do that. This uh, government doesn't work, and by me not funding it and breaking it, see, see what I told you? Keep me in power. If you don't have ideas on governing, what do you do? Well, you do the purposeful distortion field that they create. But, but it works, and by the way, right? Because it's emotional. It does makes, it work? I, I don't Who's know. Who's the it, president? Well, but I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily work. It gets people upset. It gets them angry. It makes them fearful about threats and, and, uh, and, and hyper, uh, you know, hy hyperbole and makes them afraid of things that can't even really be defined, meanwhile ignoring so many issues that... Like, right, it's a kind of real appeal to a, you know, a, a base that you stoke right. up. When uh, Sarah Huckabee Sanders did the you know, response to the State not, of the Union, I noticed she, she kept talking about... Nobody cares about Sarah Huckabee Sanders. No one has ever watched a response to the State of the Union except for Fareed Zakaria. What the fuck? CRT. She didn't even bother to spell it out. To they don't, because most people, I, I would assume most average free, Americans don't know what they That's so washed. They're not even doing good propaganda anymore. They're so fucking washed, brother. They're literally just like repeating the same outrage cycle over and over again, hoping that it fucking sticks. They're on autopilot. It's not even working right now. Like, they're not even doing a good fucking job with the propaganda. It's crazy, brother. Didn't you watch her? No, I did not. <clears throat> I actually didn't even watch it. I did not even watch it because I was like, who cares? This sucks. Purposeful. The guy who came up with that, that's purposeful. He's made, he, his plan is make everything CRT. And yeah, he works with the fucking Manhattan Institute. And honestly, it was a failure. The whole like woke agenda CRT, let's talk about children's genitals nonstop was Christopher Rufo at the Manhattan Institute, and he flubbed it. He is almost single-handedly the reason why the fucking red wave that was supposed to happen turned into a red puddle, okay? It literally fucking failed, okay? It failed, it failed, it failed, it failed. He dropped the bag big time. That's why you don't really hear from him that much. Turns out, like, turns out, for uh, a lot of people, they just don't even want to fucking... They, they don't want to constantly have the weirdest, creepiest, most unhinged, insane person at the parent-teacher's conference be like the, the, the guy that the Republican Party is getting their uh, opinions from, okay? It's the same as the abortion activists. You never want to come across like you're an unhinged, religious, zealot, freakazoid, okay? That's what the abortion activists are. They're fucking smelly... They're fucking freaks, the anti-abortion ones I'm talking about, okay? They're, like, insane. They're unhinged. They're, like, standing outside of a fucking abortion clinic bullying 14-year-old girls that are going in there and, like, freaking out on them. They're, they're psychos. You can't point to that person and be like, this is the face of our party now because it's going to get a lot of people to go, oh, yuck. I don't want that. Does that make sense? I don't want that. 
I, that's that's gross. I don't like it. Ew. And that is basically what the Matt Walsh coalition looks like to a lot of people who are like, they're sighting in every corner. What? I just had the thought, not too much new propaganda or conspiracy theories since Russia invaded Ukraine. You think the war took resources in the troll farms? Brother, it's not Russia pushing this shit. We're doing it to ourselves. Russia does not have enough material power to cause this kind of like a genuine problem in the United States of America. We do it to ourselves. They can like maybe tilt the scales a little bit, but you're crazy if you think it's like Russia that's like doing it. They can only they can only push and pull. That's it. They can't create. And by the way, all this diversity initiatives and CRT and all those other things are only there because we refuse to actually fix the real problem. The diversity and equity initiatives are a salve. They're a, a, to pacify and mollify because we won't actually do the real thing. Would we won't you? actually dismantle uh, the vestiges of all the systemic racism and all the systemic classism and all the systemic gender issues. We won't actually dismantle that. But what we will do is you can have an office in the building and every few months we're going to have to sit and listen to you talk for like an hour. And so we're good, right? Like it's a country that won't face. That's a good take. I'll explain it uh, like the, okay, the NFL, right? You know the Rooney rule? The Rooney rule in the NFL is. Ooh, because, yeah, because there's so few uh, black coaches, you have to do lip service and, and you have to at least, at least call up one black coach. Even I know this shit. God damn, dude. I mean, this is good. He's right. He, he's going to say that none of these are real solutions. The Republicans aren't even doing like real fascism and offering real solutions even though technically there are still, uh, you know, significant uh, harm uh, being done to, like, the trans community because they're already hyper-marginalized. There are so few African-American coaches. You have to at least interview, like, one of them. So that's the rule now. Instead of, it's the thing you put in place instead of looking at the owner's box and realizing, oh, right, that's just the legacy of the economic segregation that's been in our country since its founding. So we're never gonna deal with that. So here's what we are gonna do. A diversity and equity initiative, we're gonna have to talk to one black guy. So are we good? <laughs> I think we're good. But that's what I'm, what I'm trying to say is we don't, the thing that they're pointing at is the thing that's in place because we won't do the actual thing. You, for some, you sound like somebody who has a lot of anger and a lot of rage, <laughs> and yet you're, yet you're very funny. And, and, and That's your takeaway, Fareed? God damn you. Yeah. I mean, I love that. Jon Stewart is a liberal, but like he is right about a lot of the things that he just mentioned. Everything he said was spitting, okay? Maybe with a little bit of too much of a lip sauce, right? And like... The center-right guy in that conversation turns around and goes, oh, you sound real angry. Like, yeah, if you're not angry, you're not paying attention. Like, that's the difference. I love when, uh, you know, centrist liberals constantly love being like, oh, well, if you're talking about all of the material inequalities that persist in American society, if you're talking about all of the historical oppression and it's contemporary remnants uh very much harming uh you know black and brown communities working poor all that sort of stuff you're just angry you're an angry guy you seem just mad yeah i am mad it's like pretty fucked up i, I think it's like messed up that, that we we live like this when and this is more importantly when we have the capability of fixing it but we don't want to do it because and it seems impossible to do it because the people at the tippy top that have accumulated all the fucking wealth 
are making money off of it. Like, uh, how, do you, how, how do you keep all, all that together? Like, you're, there's a part that's, of you that's very optimistic. There's a part I'm of, very optimistic. <laughs> but you sound angry. I, I don't mean to sound like your therapist. No, 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 I understand. But wouldn't you, why, aren't, why isn't everybody <laughs> about real things? I mean, you, you want to be upset about real things, but isn't that what drives comedy? Or this I art agree with as anything, well. Is emotion, whether it's anger or joy or love or... <laughs> What are there other emotions? There's got to be more than that. Sadness probably hate, is in there. Envy. Hate, yeah. envy. I, okay. That says something there. I, I was just for age. Filling just, in the gaps. No, no, no. I understand. It's just top of mind. It was top of mind. Uh, you know, these are, it's hard to watch. It's hard to watch a state. You talked about Sarah Huckabee Sanders. It's hard to watch a state that's like 48th in, you know, Infant mortality and, and child poverty and literacy and won't make take a big Medicaid deal doctor, about tr uh, a trans uh, girl that wants to play soccer that doesn't that happens like once every five years there. Like it's hard to not be angry about people that try and distract from the real things that people face with weaponized nonsense. I get that. My point is, but then you also turn it into humor. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I just turn it into anger. And then sometimes I just turn it into gummies. And late at night, I just take a bunch of those. He just gets perked up off the gummy, though.